Come on, Rangers! 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 You may be wondering why the weird 80s music? Well it's one of those tracks we have in the library that we really like and really get to use. So we're going to use it here in this lost episode because frankly this is a terrible episode of Bunch of Amateurs. So why not just use the music that we don't normally use? For we're going back to that time in Maidenhead when the shoots went rather wrong. More on that later. We'll quickly do the normal Wikipedia thing. Maidenhead is a market town in the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead in the county of Berkshire. Therein resides a football club, one that claims to play in the oldest senior football ground continuously used by the same club. Like Dorking Wanderers, Maidenhead are not a full-time outfit, and thus to be a steady step two on one side for over 15 years is quite an achievement. They came up from the National League South five years before this game, and they've been clinging on ever since, with former West Ham midfielder Alan Devonshire taking care of them since 2015. Devonshire was playing the day that Jim Melrose scored for Cholton inside nine seconds at Upton Park. I know that because I had the VHS and in pre-YouTube days watching tapes like that until they wore out was how it worked. Yeah. We did intend to ask Devonshire if he remembered that occasion but he doesn't really like cameras and that, dear viewers, is going to be a problem today. Anyway, on with the team talk where Mark's microphone is a bit broken. And the GoPros are pointing all over the place and I'm in shot. Honestly, we never intended to show you this episode, but the people on Patreon and YouTube memberships, they voted for watching this one. I think they thought it was going to be kind of controversial, but it's really just a bit shit. Right, boys. <coughs> We've got a big spell of football coming up, which is great. Um, really, really good. So, it's in the notes anyway. All tune in to me, okay? Today, uh, we're going to play our normal formation. And I think we're so good when we play against these full press games. Um, you all tuned in, yeah? I remember Oxford City in the playoffs, like, and we had the bollocks in the playoffs, like a real high-paced game to play against them in a full press, and they were full pressing us, and, and we just fucking play forward, and we still, I think we had better possession against full presses, believe it or not, than with overload. So, so it can be a real tough game, real tough game. But a really good one to win. This is the sort of game we'd win all day long. I promise you that now. We're so classy going forward. Yeah, and with them boys last week at the Battle of Walsh, I thought defensively excellent. So what we need to do is try and play forward and get them a little bit out of shape and out of their comfort zones. That makes sense, OK? So they're worried about balls going in between them as opposed to just watching the game like they do most weeks in this division. Yeah, OK? So I want a fucking good warm-up, boys. We're going to go out there, Baz, in... Fuck me. What size nice kick-off? Five past. Five past. No. Five past. One of those days where you're a little bit rushed. Um, under control though? Yeah, pretty much. I, I think um, that, that win like took a lot of um took a lot of pressure off us, um, really. I think we needed that win um, in our last match against York City. Um, you know, it's it's a strange one actually because we've never been here before, but you know, all of the vibes around it was a bit more like, oh yeah, it's a National South game in terms of like the, in this league, you get these like, these big headline matches, don't you? And then you get like normality and normality of the conference with no disrespect is, is your Aldershots, your Bromleys and you know, your Wokens and that. But uh, you have got this sort of like glad rags now of the Oldhams and the Scunthorpe and these big grounds and institutions that have been around years, Wrexham and the likes, Chesterfield, so it felt more like, you know, um, going into uh, more like a comfort zone today. I feel like that's how, how, it, how it feels. It's a family club, it's a community club. We've got um, attached to us, I think, 55 now junior teams, a uh, thriving community programme. It's a part-time uh, team as well on the pitch. So, yeah, definitely a, a community club, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, the club's quite involved in the local community. Yeah, they pop up all over the place. Um, they, they do quite a lot with kids. So it's, uh, it's a good local family club, yeah. I, I think it's more of a family club than, than anything. Uh, for example, I'm a season ticket holder, and when COVID uh, 
hit and there was a lockdown, I got a letter through the post saying, are you OK? If you need help with your shopping, get in contact with the, with the club and, you know, we'll send somebody round to, to help you. Part-time side, so smaller budget, you think staying in this league is the key. We've done that now for five seasons, this is our sixth season, and um, that is the, that's the target. We need 50 plus points and we're well over sort of halfway there, so. I, I think we've struggled this season. Um, playoffs, yeah, it'll be great fun, but uh, yeah, mid-table, take out some of the stress. <laughs> listen to me to make sure you're right. Sorry, on the defending bit, keep listening to me. Maka, Seager and Nicky, um, stay high. Yeah. Maka, Seager, Nicky, stay high. If they go short, whoever the nearest one is has to go back. Yeah. All right? These teams are in this division like Maiden there because they fucking graft, mate. That's the only reason in this league, they graft like fuck, right? I don't want one player to even be a six today. Let's have one of our best performances for some time, okay? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, the issues with the dressing room, GoPros and Mark's microphone is absolutely our own fault. But when it comes to the game footage, we have found ourselves hamstrung by the safety officer insisting that GoPros present a clear and present danger to the general public. So we don't have any of them in service today. And we're not allowed to have a camera anywhere near the Dorking bench. Apparently because Alan Devonshire doesn't like that idea, even if it's got nothing to do with him. So we'll make do with what we've got, and fortunately our two best cameramen are working today, so you might not even notice the shortcomings. Especially at the start, with Dorking flying from the opening whistle, and Maidenhead seemingly surprised by the visiting team's verve. Mark's dream is for Dorking to keep the ball as much as possible and play around the full press, although lone keeper Joe Walsh will occasionally need to go long to Harry Ottaway. They'll pick up the pieces from there, hopefully. Mega drive. Yeah. Mate, I told that's why I just said what I said. They're not even pressing. They're, fuck, they're literally just all stood still. I spotted in about two seconds. Yeah. The closest Maidenhead gets to the ball in this move is when Josh Taylor slips it between Alan Massey's legs for what is probably our favourite ever assist as Ryan the Seager Mega Drive latches on and finishes confidently past goalkeeper Daniel Gaiolai. Nicky! Tell them we got time, we can play, we can play! Mark's noticed that despite playing a physical full press, Maidenhead are getting nowhere near Dorking right now, and he wants his side to make the most of it. Go on, here. Oh, mate. The home side are looking for balls into the box, and a long throw into Remy Clarima is just the ticket. Did he save that? Come on. Yeah, it's great save, fantastic save. Joe Walsh claws the ball out to keep Dorking ahead. Jasper! Oh. <clears throat> a seemingly innocuous block from Emil Aqua seems to have damaged Ed Harris, and on second viewing, it's pretty clear the Maidenhead striker knew what he was doing. Ed ain't one to stay down even like that. Not another one in the face. We were all expecting a physical encounter, and Maidenhead are really starting to provide it. Oh. That's that full Nick That's his Why are you not talking to anyone? Of all people, Nick should probably be talking to the ref to ask him, why on God's green earth is that not a yellow card? Maybe it's just because Nar McManus generally deserves to be kicked. Meanwhile, not content with trying to mess up our shoot as much as possible, Mr Angry Safety Guy is demanding that a bunch of amateurs be removed from the Dorking bench because he mistakenly thinks we're filming Mark. Perhaps if he wasn't so focused on messing up our day, he might have noticed the state of the emergency stretcher it would seem that the only thing to stop the home side right now will be Joe Walsh or the half-time whistle. Number five. Left five. Back. Here's five, yeah. Save. What, what a, a save. save. What a save. With the half nearly up, the referee decides it's about time he books someone. Not for nearly knocking out Ed Harris or breaking Niall's ankle, but for this.
Oh, he loves he's a free done. kick for them. He's not fucking booking Baz. Who'd he book? Bazza. Fucking brilliant first. Brilliant first 20 minutes. 25 minutes. Fantastic. Right? I've got a lot to go through, so stay with me, okay? The primary function here is this. They want to play in your half. They want corners, they want throws, they want shit fouls. Okay? It's important to know. Right? So if as one of our back three, so every time you pass backwards anywhere on the field today, you are passing into a full press. Does everyone understand what that means in football? Mm. Joe Cook, you've got it. You got your jaw, mate? No, I won't. You sure? Yeah, yeah. You understand, yeah? You've had a great half, by the way. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Every time you go backwards, you're passing into a full press. Now, sometimes you have to go backwards. And I'm all right <laughs> with that, right? Hear me? But don't do it as your default setting. This is a game you've got to keep the ball. If you don't keep the ball, and they have it, then their A plan is in effect. And the horn goes off. Like the old bugle goes off with the dogs running after it. That's how they play football. And then what happens is they get encouraged by that. Do you understand? They get a couple of throws, and they get encouraged by what's going on. Right? And the fans get encouraged. They're not encouraged when they're out playing them. Right, Nick, you're coming off, tactically. We need to run that boy the other direction. Okay? Be a great away win, yeah? This would be, not many teams come here and fucking win, right? And we should have been two, three nil up here, okay? We've just got to start again, and we've got, we've got to remember, this is a battle you have to win at Maidenhead. You have to win a battle. We win a battle, we're going to be looking forward to Tuesday. Christmas time is here, right? Okay, come on. Oh, come on, boy. A quick update on safety gate. He still hasn't noticed the emergency stretcher's in advisable state, even though he's standing next to it. But he has managed to get our bench cameras taken away, partly because Dan Lincoln called him a jobs worth and he threatened to have Dan removed until he realised he was a player. Um, but the petty response with our cameras means that we can no longer show you the bench unless our cameramen swing around to it. Anyway, back to the game where Mac is about to step up the quality. Oh. With the Seagan Mega Drive sandwiched between two defenders, the Dorking bench are going to struggle with this next refereeing decision. Fuck off! Is he? Is oh one? my fucking god! What the fuck's he doing there? The free kick gives the home side a chance to get the ball back into the box again. <laughs> Got to pick up! If we'd been allowed the goal mouth microphones, you'd have been able to hear keeper Joe Walsh put his name on that, which is why the hot dog let it go. Sadly, Walsh he wasn't able to clear the ball out, and Remy Clarima's head diverts it into the net. That's the least free kick you'll ever see in it. Whatever the ref is seeing in these aerial challenges, he's not seeing the same thing as the Wanderers bench. It's the other way, the fucking moron! Is he fucking stupid? Fuck off! He is fucking useless. You're having a bad game, ref! You're having a very bad game! We genuinely can't tell if Ed was at fault for that one, but we're pretty certain he's a man on a ledge when Aqua gets goal side. Ed, fuck me. If this were deemed a foul, it would be a red card, and yet Ed somehow manages to get away with grappling his opponent to the floor. That's the biggest fucking straight red ever. Isn't it? It's the biggest straight red of all time. With only seconds left, the ball lands at the feet of substitute Sean Mikulski for the last chance of the game. Went to the ball. Yeah, Ed, I heard, you heard Ed call for it as well. well yeah, but the midfielder as well. Five seconds ago. Can you can you tell him it's done though? Yeah. Done. That's it. Get up. Get up. That's it, ref. Yep. Done. You got no book. At least it's bad for both sides. Me. 
Hello, mate. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Thank you. Good to meet you, lads. Cheers, mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers, pal. Oh, mate, mate. Look at the end there. Cheers, boys. Well played. I thought today was going to be a bit of a long day. Was probably the best measure for me of where some of you are, right in our team. Okay, I want to say obviously a massive well done again to Ed, um, because ultimately, you know, dominating that position in that game was a big deal in the context of that game. Yeah, there's two things stand out for me in that game. One is just the strategical bit of realising you're playing, you know, back into a press. And that's just a, it might seem a small thing, but it's not. Because eventually, I've always told you, long ball teams stay in the game longer than teams that keep the ball. Because they don't need to work as hard, right? So for me, just that little bit there. But what I want to pick out today is, is the difference in football, right? That's a game, strategically in that game, we... They started that game the like slowest in the blocks I've seen any team start this season. Because they probably thought we're playing Dawkin and actually we'll win today. And they were very disrespectful. So they didn't even engage the ball at all. We had, if we'd have been two goals up, it wouldn't have been unfair. Especially after that really well worked bit. Yeah, that's where that game is for me. But we'll go again Tuesday. Yeah, it's a good point away from home. It's a good Point away from mine. Very good point, okay? All right, well done, boys. Well done. Dawkins Wanderers, blistering start. Um, all us on the ball, looking great. Um, made Ned, I think, probably one of the only teams this year that I think underestimated us to start the game. Uh, brilliant first half hour. Uh, then Made Ned got a foothold um, in the game. They up their work rate. I thought Josh Taylor going off in the game made a big difference to us. And then second half, felt like backs against the wall, I think because it was. But having said that, last 15 of the first half, um, Joe Walsh has made some great saves. I think out of the game, in, 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 realistically, Joe Walsh and Ed Harris have had great games. To be fair, this ground is conference as you know it, but the problem is the conference has disappeared into League Three, isn't it? This is as every bit of the, you know, if it were 15 years ago, this, all the grounds in the conference would be like this. But obviously as there's been this funnel, um, you know, with more teams coming down than, you know, and, and going up, etc. cetera, um, it, it meant that this has become a minority in the division now. Um, but I think, uh, you know, apart from the bloke, the well, safety officer, isn't it, Rich? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's, um, who's one of those you know, that don't represent the club that well. Apart from him, what a great club. Alan, all their lads, really good people. So sack the safety officer at Maidenhead or have a strong fucking word. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. If you'd like to watch a longer version of this episode, head to our channel page and find our YouTube membership options. The higher the tier that you join, the longer the episode you're going to get. And there's no adverts either. And you get loads of behind the scenes stuff, extra bits of Mark and the players and Barks and Mike and updates from me and all sorts of extra bits. Join us on YouTube memberships. And if you do, it's going to help us continue because we need that to continue making the episodes.